Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup quarterfinal between RTSD and Guinness. Uh, Guinness starts off with a quick snap. Guinness won the toss, chose to receive with his lizard man. RTSD kicking with Necromantic. Um, RTSD qualified from UK BBL and is from the UK. Does not play in Champs Ladder at all, hasn't played one game. Um, Guinness has got a win rate of 68% in Champs Ladder over about 300 games. Pretty much all with lizard men. He's the defending champ from 2016. He's Canadian and he qualified from the NATTS League. I really didn't like this from RTSD exposing an unprotected ghoul to a blitz. Obviously, uh, Guinness took advantage of that. Well, <laughs> took the opportunity, hit him, didn't really take advantage. Um, neither side took their double for the round. Uh, Guinness went for guard, which you know I thought he might have done. Um, it was guard or block really with his big options, guard on another Saurus. So by giving guard he's got two good Saurus and three bad Saurus so he can he can let the bad ones get blitzed by the Pommer and obviously block isn't a good defensive skill in this game really because he's worried about the Pom. So I think that was a good choice, you keep more guard to protect each, you know themselves with. Um, so yeah I quite like the choice of guard there and of course RTSD basically had to go with guard to fight the ridiculous strength of the lizard man team. So yeah, RTSD went for guard on the flesh golem. And yeah, pretty soon, you know, he's, he's done well here. Um, Guinness, the only way to blitz is really to come around from behind and hit out this way. And it's, it, you know, he's got a t cancel assist, get guard, and there's, he's made it very hard for the POM to get hits in, basically. and. Um, that's what he's got to try and do, hasn't he? He's got to try and protect. This is the nightmare for Guinness. He's got a couple of guard, some block, and he's just worried about James T. Kirk, the wolf. Um, if he takes over the game, it's bad times for Guinness. If he doesn't take over the game, you know, Guinness has got more strength, more agility, kind of. Way more movement. Um, so, yeah, this is... It's all about the Krupalm, <laughs> uh, basically. So yeah, Guinness being patient here, just blocking, blitzing to free up this guy. Makes sense. And he makes this kind of flying V formation, if you like. Which is pretty cool. That basically protects everybody um, from getting blitzed, which is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Weird little formation, but now it, you know, does RTSD get impatient trying to crack this, or does he just try to defend? The only way he can get a two dice is by committing the guard. So he's not even like, all he's doing from this is trading hits, isn't it? Um, which isn't great. Doesn't get hit with Claw Palm. Or even Claw. So yeah, I like, I like this from Guinness, even though it's only two turns in. You know, he, he, knows, he, he knows he's got to protect his Saurus if he's going to have any chance. He's not in any rush to make progress. I guess he's just, you know, he doesn't have to make progress till turn seven. Turn seven, he could, uh, he could burst through. You know, so he's happy just to take these hits. Three dice with mighty blow. Thanks very much. Makes the regen though. Oh yeah, it, twelve players for RTSD, only eleven for Guinness, but Guinness has the apple. that he gave up to get the guard in and he gets KO'd so uh, yes is it is it unlucky for a for a thick skull guy to get KO'd on a block yes but on the other hand that was the cost he, he made when he was getting the system wasn't it 
So now he's managed to get the assists in. Um, but actually not fully. This would this is uh, if the first dice was a if the first block was a push. And because of the guard, he'd be six and he'd be three, four, five, six. So this was this was still not really a frenzy trap, but it was still a, a two dice into a one dice, which is bad enough, isn't it? Uh, and he piles on and gets the KO. So, so good for him. <laughs> he is left quite exposed with a wolf, so he could be seeing a foul. Surprised he didn't move the other wolf in first. Um, I don't know where he was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He probably should have put somebody in here, shouldn't he? So it would have been two dice into two dice. So either he's just going to control the wolf here with strength four and guard, or he's going to try and foul him. Could be a plus three assist foul. But it's scary without the reserve, isn't it? That, and that's one of the benefits of uh, taking the leader crocs that he could have done. Would have given him the reserve, and then he could have he could have fouled here without any any worries really. But now this this foul, if he makes it, is extremely risky. <laughs> Come on, do it. <laughs> oh dear. Runs all around the houses. And, you know, if he got sent off there, it would have been terrible. But he doesn't get the removal, but also doesn't get sent off. And, uh... Yeah, it's solid by Guinness. Guinness does play very solidly always, you know. Skinks all screened off here. No easy hits. This is a frenzy trap again. Survives it again. But you know, he's, he's kind of got to go for these. You know, it's a 75% knockdown. So he's kind of got to go for these moves, RTSD. It's not um, it's not bad play that he's, that he's doing them. It's just... It's the nature of Guinness having a team full of strength four, isn't it? And uh, and it's so fast as well. So he had a few options there. He could have broken forward by blitzing this this zombie, or he could have broken outwards there. But he's decided not go forward. Just just move laterally. I guess getting further away from the wolf is his main. <laughs> well, both wolves. You can get away from both wolves going this way. This tackle's a bit inconvenient. Oh. He does fail because of it. it saves his reroll. So he's, you know. Good reroll conservation there. You got three rerolls for three turns. RTSD looks like he's going for a bit of an L screen now. So you can get the wolf here. And yeah, kind of play safe. Now he could go there. And he could go there. And he, he, could, have a, he could have a full L screen here. But he decides instead to go ham. Um, another frenzy trap. So he could move the white ghoul into here. And uh, I think this is really bad. Um, he does. He re uses a reroll on that. But he went an extra square than he had to. I mean, he was obviously setting up the pom blitz, right? And the pom, if we, if we look. Would have gone one, two, three, four, five. So you'd still be in a frenzy trap. Um, if he'd put the guard there, not only would he have been taken up an extra play, he could have he could have made the same hit and without one with one less GFI, which as it happened was a double one. But he's leaving. You know, he's he's L screened here and left this completely open just for the chance of a blitz. I think he probably should have uh, 
you know, just not blitz that turn and maybe he's made it safer, but as it is, Guinness can just cage up all the way over here. Um, easily now. Might be an idea to use the crocs as the cage corner there. Might move the crocs first to see if he worked. Could blitz with him and control the pom. But he does none of that. He, <laughs> he does a bit of a wild blitz here. Uh, GFI to hit. And GFI. So that was, that was really committing to the crocs play there. I think I would have just moved him to there, and then either blitz with this guy or this guy, um, you know, and to get there. That was pretty wild. Just going up for the mighty blow hit and double GFI, all with Lona. He kind of had to do the second GFI to stop him just getting claw pond. So now at this point, RTSD basically gives up on the score and just tries to do damage with his with his wolf, which. While it may seem lame to some people, it's fair enough. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna stop him, is he? He's taken this this KO, which is huge, down to nine players total. True, he has removed one, but if he gets a Kaz here, it's uh, it's devastating, isn't it? He does not get a Kaz. And the dirty one dice pow on the on the Saurus there. So again, this is just gonna make an, an Uber cage here. And you know, R RTSD could think about fouling here. He has got the reserve. But he's only got twelve, so maybe he won't foul. It's limited value, isn't it? The fact the fact that Guinness would have two chances to KO or recover. He'd really just be fouling for a Kaz. Um, I've seen people do it though, so he, he could definitely foul here. assisting so he just try to get safe from the Zorus Blitz I guess it's a 1-0 for Guinness but no damage no permanent damage for Guinness there so crucial KO rolls basically especially for Guinness so the, the guard comes back doesn't come back for Guinness yet the Zorus. So yeah, that was a good drive. I mean, I think I think Guinness played it pretty much perfectly. Did not let RTSD make any two dice into two dice blitzes with the uh, wolf, apart from right at the end once the score was secured. And yeah, played very well. Took took the space when it was given to him. And uh, yeah, great stuff by Guinness there. Absolutely. Now I've got the one turn chance, which hasn't got much chance. With dodges, I, I, honestly, I would have just backlined this probably, um, because I think, you know, the hard part is the dodges, and you would have almost no chance of getting through. Um, so I think I might have just backlined this one. But Guinness tries to stop the pushes. The danger is as well, he's he's got to go two back because of the frenzy. Um, but yeah, there's a chance. Blitz in here, then block, and then block, and then block there. So you know, first, first. Oh, okay, well, well. let's let's pause it here. So he blitzes him into here, then blocks the wolf to there.
then blocks the wolf's diagonal to there and then he blocks this guy and pushes the wolf to there so you can get the three squares four the problem is a four plus three plus so Guinness's setup here is is actually poor because he's not he's not he's, you know he's, it's a four plus three plus it, it's what his, his defense is literally worse than if it was a back line there um, and because he's to be two squares away because of the frenzy um, they're just they're just not getting in the way of the pushes or anything so yeah pretty pretty bad defense from Guinness to be honest I do think the back line would have just been just as good if not better so yeah setting up for the one turn It's a quick snap, and that is absolutely phenomenal. This is so he's done the right move there of moving the uh, flesh golem there. He just needs to get guys in here, and yeah, that's unbelievable. This 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 one turn touchdown now, if he does it correctly, is forty five percent to score. But he moved these two wrong. Should have should have filled this square in with a move. Um, yeah, 45% if he makes the correct pushes, which is incredible. Incredible for an agility three touchdown, one turn touchdown, because you know, that's just makes it so easy. He just has to push, fill in this square. He should have filled that in that square with a quick snap. Block to there. Then he could have blocked to here. Then, because this guy he could have blocked him to there. So he could have actually, you know, taken away a GFI actually, so higher than 45%. Um, but he, even with just two pushes, and then he can blitz down the skink. Or but you know, it's just this was just an incredible opportunity, unbelievable. And instead, I don't know what he's done. He's just he's just had a brain fart, or he's bottled it, or something. I don't know what on earth he's done. Um, you know, unbelievable. It's just. Crap. <laughs> There's no other way of, of putting it, is there? It was just... That was just crap. That was... Unbelievable. I, I literally couldn't... I still can't believe it. I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, he had such a golden opportunity. I mean... Unbelievable. Um... Yeah, he really, he really blew it, and that quick snap made it so easy. And I mean, okay, I'm saying easy, it's still less than 50-50, but for a one-turn touchdown, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, instead he just, he just blocked for attrition. So yeah, outrageous. I don't, know, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the situation or misclicked or. What what went wrong there? But I mean, that was a golden opportunity for RTSD. And will he be kicking himself about that? <laughs> yes, it's the answer. <laughs> um, regardless of what happens, I mean, that is that is just outrageous, isn't it? And I mean, so this is the thing. So now watching it, you know, watching it with a fresh mind, you're like, oh well, I'd do this and I'd do this. But I mean, what must be running through RTSD's head right now after he's just after he's just done that, <laughs> you know, really hard. He's got to somehow, somehow focus on the game and and try to play good blood ball, despite this atrocious, really atrocious uh, scoring attempt. You know, I mean, and and you know, you may not know how to do a one turn yourself or whatever. You know, maybe RTSD normally doesn't play movement eight teams <laughs> but still you know for the world cup you would think you would you would research how to do it wouldn't you at least and uh but you know maybe he just doesn't care <laughs> you know even though there's quite a lot of money on the line um if he, he might have a good job and might just not care at all might have just tried to qualify for fun and might just be you know 
not really not really caring too much but personally I would have definitely you know even if I didn't know how to score one turn as I would have worked it out and you know you would think quality just being good enough to qualify for the World Cup you should know how to do it um, like clockwork so I really don't know what happened whether it was a misclick or head gone or whatever but really incredibly unbelievably poor play there's no way of getting around it I can't sugarcoat it I can't you know um, that was awful by RTSD but he gets rewarded with a random Kaz from a rock uh, Guinness had the fame as well but was to no avail I mean that he didn't get the fame by a good play or anything so it's not a, it's not like he can feel bad because of it or anything So he uses the, that block to get the uh, card out, which is all right, isn't it? This is uh, very risky for the wolf here, isn't it? If it's a double push, <laughs> he's, um, he's in trouble. He gets the power, though. Of course, piles on into a Kaz. So, what a turnaround! Um, and Guinness actually uses the apple there. Now, you know, it it was a miss next game, so it was only 50 50 to, for the apple to work. Um, it doesn't help him on the drive. So, it, you know, it's only for overtime that he's using that app on a 50-50. He's going to take seven more hits from Wolves, probably, on this drive. So, you know, maybe... Or maybe he thinks he can control the Wolf and he's not going to take too many blocks from, from Cora anymore this drive. Maybe that's what he thinks. But it was certainly a bit of a risky app Um You know, chances are he'd get a badly hurt in the rest of the half. And you know it doesn't help him now. It only helps him for all the time, and it, and it was a rookie one, so maybe he could have not up all that. But you know it, it was fair enough at the end of the day. There's no guarantee that RTSD will get more cars, or even a KO. You know, like a KO this turn would probably be preferable for you know Guinness would probably prefer to up a KO this turn. Um, you know, just to give him a chance to win in normal time because. Guinness probably wants to win into a normal time now that he's down to nine players. <laughs> um, well, ten players max before the count. But nine players in this drive, you know, he, he doesn't want to go overtime anyway, does he? But it, was, it was interesting, funnily enough, somebody, uh, Triparis, and uh, Champs Ladder Discord and that, was saying about how in any matchup, probably one team should be playing for overtime, shouldn't it? Um, and that was interesting. I mean, on about turn five or six, RTSD started to play for overtime by just running away. But yeah, interesting, isn't it? I guess that's something that both teams should think about, is which team wants overtime, you know? What one team, or one coach and team combination, must be less than 50% to win. <laughs> so if you can correctly identify which one you are, Wow, that was a re-roll on a bonehead for a blitz. That was, with overtime possible, that was a brave, ballsy re-roll. And he got the three dice and he got the KO from it. So he was fully rewarded for that re-roll. But that was a very greedy blitz, wasn't it? He could have just blocked with the skink on two dice with anybody. So he could have, he could have, you know, could have got more hits. Other ways. Um, also, he's exposed this this uh, Sorano. Um, so yeah, that was unbelievably ballsy reroll from Guinness. I mean, you know, maybe he and then he got the KO as well, didn't he? So if he kept the Apo, he could have Apo that KO to try and win this drive. But it, you know, certainly that reroll of the Bonehead certainly gives the impression that he's trying to win this drive. I hated this from uh, RTSD as well. That this player. I'd have put the player here, so you can push him to there, and then the second push, you know, you're all in line prote protecting him. Um, certainly from fouls. You know, so like, this was just... 
Greed reroll from RTSD there. Um, yeah, I thought this was really bad, really bad positioning from the the two the, the ghoul. Should have been there, hundred percent, I think. Um, because now with the pile on, he's exposed. He can get a three, two assist foul here, three assist if he blitzes the zombie. So you can get a, a four assist actually. You could get a four assist foul. Okay, now he can only get a three assist foul. But he can get a three assist foul here. Whereas if he had if he had kept them there, okay, he could have blitzed that and still got a three assist foul. <laughs> but um, he can get a one assist foul without any any blitz. Whereas before he, he could only get a minus assist without any assist. So yeah, I think that was, I think it was wrong. I think you sh totally should have had him back. And now. Guinness scores again for a three dice mighty blow blitz, this time only a zombie, and then uses a team reroll again. So that is wild. Really wild. I think the first one he was hitting a wolf with mighty blow. This one he was getting an extra two assists for the foul. But that's really, really greedy, isn't it? Going for the, you know, this is He didn't need to go for the Saurus activation. He could have just blissed with a Saurus. He didn't need to go for the Crocs activation blitz. So, as it is, he gets the he gets the removal. So he's removed both walls this drive, but he's on three, six, seven players, eight players, which isn't isn't great, is it? But then RTSD's on nine. So I mean, oh yeah, there was a skink hiding behind the crocs. I mean, to, to me, it's it's not bad, <laughs> but uh, I don't like it because he could have three rerolls still. And you know, yes, he wants to win in normal time. Absolutely, Guinness wants to win in normal time. You know, he, he he's on a ticking crock here. Um, but had he had he saved his apple for for this drive, he could have had another Soros in the pitch right now. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, he still got Soros, and the skinks can get in the way as well. So he still got a chance to stop the drive here. But. Um, You've got to feel like the longer it goes on, the more it favours RTSD. So now, now, now Guinness just has to stop the touchdown here. This is the only thing. The only thing that matters now. Amazing having the walls out of his hair. He just absolutely has to win. Has to win in normal time. Is he going to make the GFI Croxigore Blitz? Three dice again? Probably. It gets a Crox on the ball. No, he's not. Oh. And now he kind of had to reroll that double skull, right? But now he's out of now he's out of rerolls. I'm not sure about this this last Saurus now gives RTSD a chain push. Um Another random KO just from a zombie. Now this is interesting because the chain push that I would have done would have been the ghoul blitzing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven GFI, which would have chained the um, the Croxigore back, and then you could block the Croxigore, and then maybe block him with you know block a skink and stuff as well. So that that's the one that I would have done. Um, RTSD does a bigger commitment but a better chain push. Um, because there's no there's no GFI required, and it works perfectly. This is a very nice chain push after after <laughs> after funnily enough after completely bollocksing the one turn. Um, he didn't need this zombie here. I think maybe he shouldn't have moved that zombie there yet, but never mind. Um, yeah, after completely bollocksing the one turn, um, he does a he does a great chain push to get his cool because he only needed the push. He didn't need to hit the. I mean, obviously, my way would have got to hit the Crocs, which would have been nice to hit the Crocs. But also, my way, a 1 in 9 would have been a disaster on the Crocs. So, yeah, I really like that play from RTSD. Maybe he's not p just pushing there would have been better, because the skin would have still maybe fallen on the dodge. And this way, what this means is now, this zombie is going to take ages to get relevant. Um, so maybe he could have taken the push there. I understand why I took the both down on all balls, but... Uh, so again, Guinness gets the 
gets to blitz the defenseless ghoul with his mighty blow tackle. Uh, not mighty blow tackle, block tackle. But no cigar again. An untimely um, bonehead. You know, again, Guinness, Guinness is doing really well. You know, he's really trying to, uh, you know, do everything he can. Cheeky one dice power, that was outrageous. Um, you know, he's doing everything he can to to get ahead here. That was a really huge, really huge bone. I think I might have got the guard in there and then blitzed on three, blocked on three dice and blitzed on three dice. RTSD just uses two and gets both knockdowns. Which is fair enough. It's not. It's not bad, is it? It means he's got an extra player free now to act, which is certainly good. Now I hated this. I'll tell. I'll tell you. What, I hated this zombie going to here. It doesn't really achieve anything. I would have kept him behind the ghoul, just because you. You know, this way he's he's left space in here to tag the ghoul with a with a skink or even if he was to make a million dice rolls blitz it with a skink he could literally have blitzed from here um you know block there and he could have blitzed in with two assists and got one die uh, two dice on the ball so now obviously that wasn't very that wasn't very uh likely but definitely tagging him with some dodges is possible I think this guy's maybe is in the wrong square here, and that's because this zombie this zombie can move forward to tag him, and he doesn't really need to be this far over. I don't think. I think he could have been here and done the same job. So, bit of a mistake there, I think, by Guinness. And he did tag. He did make the dodges through to tag the uh, goo. And yeah, he can't take any chances here. RTSD he has to go for the three dice blitz because he can still move forward a little bit. And with a go get in normal range. Moment to GFI. So he has to at least go forward one square. A little bit tricky here because there are obviously there's clearly chain push things involved. So he's a bit wary of getting too far forward. I think maybe I think maybe the uh, fleshy should have gone there, but never mind. So yeah, Guinness Guinness fills in the square, does the chain push. He really wanted a pal there. But you know, obviously not really unlucky to have not got it. Because if he had got the uh, if he had got the pal there, it's brilliant because then he makes the blitz here, comes in, now this is a two dice to chain him onto there. So you know that could have been really good. Um but now he's just got to uphill it. And hope he doesn't roll what he just rolled. <laughs> I think his RTSD here. I would I would block this this Saurus first and then surf the skink just because you know he might as well surf a skink. And uh, maybe he was going for the skink surf, but maybe not so optimal way. But um, he rolled a rolled a knockdown, which is fair enough. Isn't it? So there you go, he's got the he's got the turn 16 score. So Guinness will have a small one turn attempt with hardly any players left. Both come back for RTSD. And all three stay out for Guinness. So I mean that's <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Um, ridiculously swingy look there. But that, that's blood ball, and um, yeah, that's Guinness has definitely got the short end of the stick on the KO recoveries. Overall, that's that's been two wolves and a flesh golem KO'd. All came back on the first try. Um, Guinness, on the other hand, has failed four out of five KO rolls.
So I, I don't even think with six players, it's probably not possible to get. Oh, it might be possible, but probably not possible to get the one turner. <laughs> it, you'd have like six plus dodge to hit the zombie anyway, because the two the two flesh golems. So you know maybe it's possible, but um, perfect defense. First thing you should do is put the zombie over here, so you can't be chained at all, 100%. But I mean, really, horrible for Guinness 6 players. <laughs> I don't think there was really much chance anyway. I guess his plan was to 6 plus dodge in, push to there, and then... But then he didn't have a skink on the LOS. He needed a skink on the LOS. If he'd had a skink there, he could have used the whole method, and then pushed him forward 1. He probably could have done it, even with six players. There might have been a chance. I say probably, there might have been a chance, but very unlikely. Maybe he's needed to quick snap or something. But yeah, there wasn't really, there wasn't really a one turn chance on. with six players. Agility three, two stand firm. <laughs> It was basically no chance to one turn there. It may have been possible. Though. So yeah, with uh, six players for Guinness, he needs some players back whether he wins the toss or not. Because he's got he's got no re-rolls. He only gets one. <laughs> so, you know, it's just dice, isn't it? It's just dice. Um, Guinness wins the toss to give him a vague, some vague sliver of hope. But yeah, seven players versus 11. It's going to be really... And you know, Wolves being so fast with block, tackle and frenzy. The ultimate, the ultimate player for knocking over a skink. Um, yeah, really. And Guinness is already out of rerolls as well. So <laughs> it's just, it's a nightmare, nightmare for Guinness this. I guess just sideline cage and hope for the best is is about all he can do here. Perfect defense. <laughs> and now with with no rerolls for Guinness, I would absolutely just you know base all of his players because then this one especially can't even make a one a, a, a you know. He couldn't even make a one dice block. All these, if they were making one dice blocks, then, you know, put a strength guy in the diagonal or whatever. I just put loads of players, so they just can't do anything. And, and obviously every dice roll is a chance to fail for Guinness now, isn't it? So I think RTSD should have should have based everyone up, but obviously can understand not doing it because it is scary. It is scary to give away blocks and stuff. But um, I think, and you know, it's different when your tournament life is on the line than when you're just watching somebody, but that was really unlucky for Guinness as well, because he had the vague chance of some kind of, you know, blitz and GFIs and sideline cage it, and that, that was robbed. So... Yeah. It's been a pretty... I mean, but, you know, RTSD's letting move all the source around, which... You know, he, he, if he makes the pickup handoff here, he can still get in scoring range. Just about. Oh, he doesn't even need the handoff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, double GFI'd, and he could have been there, and and you know he would have had, he would have, and this one could have run up, and he would have had half a chance. Um. So yeah, I think he sh he definitely should have based everybody up, but yeah. Absolutely understand not doing it because it's different, isn't it? It's, it's a lot easier when you're watching. Everyone's an expert when they're watching, and uh, I'm well aware. I'm well aware of that. You know that it's not. It's not as easy in in real time with pressure on everything. And maybe he's still thinking about that one turner that he messed up. You don't know. Let's tackle on the ball. Not bad. Now he does tag all the other source.
and just tackles under the ball and cut. I quite like that, just putting the tackles on on. But, uh, you know, no one cares about that. So now, Guinness's play <laughs> is something like passing to this, this Saurus. <laughs> Which isn't good. And he fails the uphill to get the scatter. And that's likely to be all she wrote, isn't it? surprised about that push because personally I would have just blocked him blocked the source away from the ball um, and then not you know not cared about that this way he gets to knock him into a core palm hit but I think I would have just uh, kind of made sure wanted to make sure of the uh, being able to pick the ball up this turn goes for the scatter gets another removal <laughs> as safe as it can be. Ah, he makes the pivot when he's away. Obviously not going to GFI. No one can even reach him apart from this one. So he, he can only reach the base. He failed the first dodge. <laughs> Into a removal because, because why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so yeah, the defending chap. Horribly, horribly unlucky, Guinness. Um, you know, absolutely. I'd say this was a dicing. For some reason, RTSD doesn't score here. I don't know if he doesn't know the rules or if he just wants to be a dick. <laughs> but for some reason, he doesn't score straight away. <laughs> yeah, very. that's very strange, isn't it? Maybe he's going for a pitch clear. The World Cup hasn't had a pitch clear, so... On Fumble, this is called Narmering. Well, not actually this example, but on Fumble, there is a thing called Narmering after the coach Narma, who um, decided to not score in overtime like this in tournaments so that he could, he could you know, make more cars and uh, make completions and stuff during overtime. Um, but yeah, very, very strange in a tournament. A, you know, a res tournament with no star player points or anything. It's, but, you know, it's fair enough, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, he can play the game how he wants. It's his tournament as well, isn't it? So Guinness, Guinness is now forced to, <laughs> to put pressure on to make the game end. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe RTSD didn't know the rules for all the time. Who knows? Maybe something being said at chat, maybe some needle between the players, don't know. But there you go, he gets the, he gets the win out here, Steve. And I, I think he played fine apart from the one turn, you know. The, the, the chain push he did to get his ball free was really nice. Um, better than the one that I, well, I th safer the one that I would have gone for. Um, and I didn't see that, so, you know, he did, he, he did do well. Um, RTSD, don't get me wrong, but 18 AV breaks to 5, you know. Um, 38 bucks, 15 AV, loads of KOs that didn't really recover as well. So, you know, even that doesn't tell the story, 6 KO to 3, because RTSD's all recovered instantly, and most of Guinness has stayed out. Um, 19, 31, 29, so great block dice, hardly any skulls or both downs. Go for it's weren't very good. Uh, Pickups were on point, pass didn't matter. Wake up after KO were all fantastic. Um, this wake up for a KO counts the ones at the end of the game, so it, it wasn't anywhere near as good as this. It was horrible, it was like one out of eight or something. 
um, or two out of eight or something like that. And then um, the Dodgers were, were actually pretty decent. The Boneheads weren't bad, but they were kind of crucial when they happened, I think. And uh, yeah, the loner was his decision to go for the loner rerolls. Which is arguably wrong, but again, you know, nothing stone cold wrong. There was pros and cons to everything, wasn't there? 33, 30, 17, so horrible block dice for uh, half as many powers as he should have had. So yeah, you know, really, just, again, I don't want to use the term dicing, but it was really, really rough, really rough game for Guinness. Probably no one in the world could have won that game, and he played pretty perfect first half, but RTSD did play a solid game, apart from the one turn. So congrats to him. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.